student uh, announced to me that today that he was going to go out and get himself a very expensive firearm. This has come up a few times because they really want the gun. And uh, I've had other students that tell me they have nice 1911s and so on. And these are these are people who are getting into the security business and going to be carrying firearms because uh, you know through practical defense systems. That's the company that uh, my partner and I founded that uh, my wife and I own half of. Um, and what I ended up telling them is what I'm going to share with you, and that is that if you have a gun that you're using for home defense or for personal defense, uh, something that you know that you want to uh, hang on to, and it's your pride and joy. Uh, I have a 1911 I've had for, I think I bought in 1978 or something. It's a beautiful gun. I just had a bunch of custom work done to it. And I have a, a really nice Smith & Wesson Model 66. You've probably seen in other videos I've done that I really like. It's a beautiful gun and it's older, uh, but I don't want to lose either one of those. So I will not carry one of those with my concealed carry permit. I will not carry those for the security company. I will not use them for home defense because uh, in the event that I ever have to use either one to defend myself, God, God forbid, the police are going to take that as evidence in a shooting and I'm probably never going to see it again. Now, let me give you an instance in which I know that occurred. Uh, it's been uh, 20 years ago or more. I was living uh, with my wife at the time in a duplex, and we had a, a neighbor who was very nice who was a single mom. Her name was Susie. I can't remember her daughter's name, but her daughter was only about seven years old. And we were having getting ready to sit down and have dinner, and uh, I could hear dogs barking intently, and I could hear Susie screaming for help and her daughter screaming for help. And, uh, and the dogs were growling, and I went outside, and I, I got my, I, what I could see them doing was I could see these pit bulls were trying to get at uh, this young seven-year-old uh, kid, and uh, there was Susie uh, fending him off with a piece of a two-by-four, but she was up against her screen door, and so there was no way for her to open the screen door, which opened out to get in her house. She was kind of stuck there, and they had her pinned there. And I went back inside and got that, uh, that 45, and walked out the door with it and told my wife call, and said, please call the police, Susie's being attacked by dogs. Well, when I went out there to deal with it, one of the dogs came at me and I shot it. And uh, and there you are. So the other one, when the gun came on, went off, the other dog ran and I didn't shoot at it. And I waited patiently for the police. I had a neighbor that saw the whole thing happen. Police came out and uh, even after hearing from the witness and me and Susie and everything else, they decided to arrest me for felony cruelty to animals and discharging a firearm in the city limits, both of which were absurd. And indeed, the district attorney at the time thought it was absurd and didn't press any charges against me, and the judge actually apologized to me and said, we should have made you citizen of the year. But here's the problem. One, I had the expense of bailing myself out of jail, but then I had to hire an attorney to fight to get my gun back. Now, it turns out the attorney was a really nice guy. He didn't charge me a whole lot and I was able to get my gun back. But if I'd had to pay a fortune to do that, it would have been more than the value of the gun and I would have lost a really fine firearm because I stood up as a citizen to defend someone and protect them. So here's what I advise. I, I For work, I carry a polymer pistol. I carry an XD-40 uh, if I'm working in uniform, which I don't do hardly ever. But if I do, I carry an XD-40. For my concealed carry permit, I carry a Taurus Model 85 or an XD uh, subcompact. That's what I carry. Because any of those guns can be replaced for a small amount of money, and I count them as a cost of doing business. If for some reason I have to actually use them, which I pray I never do, but if I do, I know police are going to take them for evidence, and I'm going to consider them lost, and I'm never going to see them again. So my advice to you is if you have a gun for home defense or you have a gun that you're planning on using for uh, concealed carry or something along those lines and you uh, don't ever want to lose that gun because it's a prized possession, do yourself a favor, go out or you're a security guard or you're a police officer and you're carrying a gun every day that you own that uh, you don't ever want to lose. I'm just going to strongly suggest to you right now that you go buy a different gun and make sure that you have one that you don't mind losing, that you don't mind handing to the police department and saying, here it is, take it, and knowing you're never going to get it again. The other thing I'll mention to you is this. If you have a lot of uh, firearms, a nice collection or something of firearms in your home, make sure they're locked up in a safe. One, that's the responsible thing to do if it's not your home defense gun. Or 
put them somewhere else. Find another location to store them in that's not in your house. Because if you ever have to defend yourself against a, a would-be attacker in your home, somebody breaks in your house 3 o'clock in the morning and you have to shoot that person, you know what? The cops are going to show up, and when they do, that's a crime scene, and they're going to just walk through and stroll through your entire house, and they're going to search through that entire house looking for whatever they bump into. It's called the plain view rule, and anything they find in that house that they think is a violation, they're going to take with them. And if they have any indication that the shooting was not justified, even in the slightest indication, they're going to take the gun that you used and they're going to take every other firearm in your house. And even if you're exonerated, if it comes out you didn't do anything wrong, you're going to have to pay an attorney to go get all of those firearms back. And it can cost you thousands and thousands of dollars of your hard-earned money. So that's the reality in which we live. Uh, if you don't like that, then I'm with you. I don't like it either. I would strongly suggest that you uh, address these things by, uh, by contacting your legislator in the area in which you live, by um, you know, making them aware of these issues, by joining some organizations that fight for firearms rights to prevent this stuff in California, uh, maybe CalGuns, the California Rifle and Pistol Association. Uh, gun Owners of California, great organization. Certainly, I would, A number one, I would join the National Rifle Association. They're spending a fortune in California right now on lawsuits and legal actions trying to change California laws since our California legislature is crazy and they get the vapors ah! over anything that has to do with firearms. Um, so there's not much you can do there, but through the court system, there's a lot we can do. Uh, but the only way we can do it is if these organizations that have the capability to fight it are supported by you and I. So I would suggest if you don't like any of this stuff, you got to take steps to change it. Uh, joining the NRA would be my number one step if I were you. And you can do it if you want to. I'm not an NRA. I'm not a shill for the NRA. I don't work for the NRA. I'm not one of those guys. I'm just an honest, law-abiding gun owner um, who knows how this works and uh, has been through some experiences uh, and I support the NRA as a result. So uh, if you'd like, you can go down to the uh, info section of the video on YouTube. There's a link there we put there for you. You can click on it and you can join the NRA and it'll save you 10 bucks. Uh, it costs less than a box of ammunition to join the National Rifle Association for a year, but it adds your voice to the rest of our voices. And it helps the NRA when they can go into a legislator's office or a sheriff's office or a police chief's office and say, uh, our millions of members don't like this. Now, right now, most of those members are in other states. And yet we have tons of gun owners here in California, but they don't join. Wouldn't it be great if the NRA could say, our 5 or 10 million members here in the state of California don't like this. That would rattle some trees, shake up some uh, politicians, and actually make some changes. So that's, that's the one thing we can do about it, in addition to, you know, doing some writing to our congressman and that kind of stuff. But in the meantime, please uh, take some advice as far as the gun that you set aside for home defense. My home defense gun is a cheap, and it, you know, a very, I say cheap compared to my 1911. It's not cheap. No gun is cheap, but it's a quality polymer uh, handgun. Uh, that's the one I use now for home defense. My home defense shotgun is a Mossberg 500 pump. Great gun, but I can replace it very inexpensively if the cops want to keep it. And that's the one, that's the plan that you want to use. I would not use your very expensive shotgun, very expensive, uh, you know, $2,500 AR or your uh, $1,500 or $2,000 uh, 1911 because you're going to lose it and it's going to cost you many thousands of dollars to get it back and you're going to end up just losing a fine gun and have to go buy another one. So there you are. I wish I had better news for you. I don't, but that answers the questions I got, I hope. If you have more questions, feel free to send me a send me a message on Facebook. I'm happy to answer them. It's not a problem. Uh, if I have the answer, if I don't, I'll just tell you I don't know, uh, and I'll send that back to you an email. If it's something that I feel like more, if I get a lot of them or I feel like it's a common question, I'll put together something on the vlog here and throw it up on the YouTube channel for you, and maybe it'll help more people out uh, to get some of those questions answered. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, wherever the button is, and uh, share. Uh, the more that you have people watch the videos, the more videos that uh, we can actually produce. Thanks again for watching.